Hey guys, welcome to this video on indefinite integrals. At this point, I'm assuming you're familiar with derivatives or differentiation. Well, when working with integrals, you keep the same principle of working with derivatives in mind, except you kind of work backwards. So let's take a look at a function. Which function did we differentiate to get this function? This question may seem harder than it is if you've never been asked. So let's take a logical approach. First, let's take the derivative of this function. Recall that when differentiating powers of x, we bring this exponent down and multiply times the base, then we subtract one from our exponent. When we do that to this function, then we get... All right, now the reason we looked at how to take the derivative was one, to refresh your memory, and two, to make you think about what exactly is happening when we're taking the derivative. So now let's take a look back at our original question. Which function did we differentiate to get this function? Let's work with what we know. We know that when this function was differentiated, that one was subtracted from the exponent. So math and logic tell us if we add one to the exponent, then we should get the original exponent we started with. What else do we know? Well, we know that whatever the original exponent was, was brought down. And so if we know it's eight, we know that eight was brought down and multiplied by our base. But when we look at our function, we don't have an eight here. So we know that when we multiplied, whatever we multiplied by caused eight to cancel out. Well, again, just a little math and logic, and we know that eight times one eighth cancel out. So where does that put us? Well, we know that our original exponent was eight. So that would give us x to the eighth. But we also know that when we took the derivative and brought it down, we multiplied it times the base, and whatever we multiplied by canceled out. So we know that there is a 1 eighth in the coefficient. So our first term here, and I'm going to write this before the derivative was taken as big F. And our original term here is going to be 1 eighth x to the eighth. Well, we do the same thing to each of our other two terms. So let's take a look at our 4x here. Again, one was taken away from our exponent. So we need to add that one back, which gives us x squared. Now the two in our exponent that we now know that we have was brought down and multiplied and whatever it was multiplied by gave us four. So two times what is four? Two, which makes our original term before the derivative was taken two x squared. We're almost done with this one. It looks like our last term here dropped a variable in the derivative process. And we know that there had to have been a variable because if not, it would just have been a constant and the derivative of a constant is zero. So one was subtracted, which obviously left us with a zero in the exponent because anything to the power of zero is one. So let's add that one back, which means that we just bring back the x. So that gives us 11x. This process of finding the original function of a function that has been differentiated is what we call integration. Another way you could say this is finding the antiderivative or indefinite integral. But here is a more formal definition. First, when you have your integral sign here, you must always place your dx at the end. The dx lets you know where the integrand ends. Secondly, there are a few properties that you need to be aware of. Now, the first is, what this property tells us is that we can factor out any multiplicative constant. The second property is this.
Now, what this is, is it's really just the first property, but what this tells us that we can do is we can factor out any negative sign in front of that constant as well. The third and last property that we'll talk about in this video is Now, what this property is telling us is that if terms are being added or subtracted, then we can take their integrals individually. Now, let's work out a few examples. So, in the first example, I want to start with the original function, take the derivative, then integrate. I won't do this with every example, but I want you guys to see what happens with a constant and to show you guys that we will actually get back our original function when we integrate. You already know the answer. When we integrate this function, we should get back our original function here. In our last example, we walked through how to find the antiderivative, just kind of logically working backwards. But for this one, I will let you in on the formula. The integral of a power of x is What this is telling us to do is add one to our exponent and then divide by our exponent plus one and always adding our plus c at the end. Let's see if this works. You'll eventually, as you continue to practice, get quick enough to just be able to look and see what the original function was before the derivative was taken. But the formula is super helpful, especially when you start getting into more tricky numbers. Now, this next formula is pretty simple. Here's an example. Let's say you want to integrate nine. So you have nine dx. Our formula tells us that when you have a constant, then all you have to do is bring an x to multiply by our nine here, which would give us equal to nine x plus some constant. This makes sense because when we take the derivative of anything times x, the x just goes away and we are left with a constant. So let's work through a couple different examples. Because we are adding and subtracting our terms, we can integrate each term individually. On our first two terms, we can apply the power of x integral formula, and on our nine, we can apply our integral of a constant formula. And here's our answer. All right, now let's look at another example. So again, we can integrate these terms individually and apply our power of x integral formula. To do that, I'm going to rewrite these terms. Now I can apply my power of x integral formula. And after we simplify, here is our answer. As you practice, you'll begin to spot these antiderivatives much easier. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for further help. See you guys next time.